Hey guys, I'm Matt Letty, and uh, I did a video yesterday that went over the boss unique usage over time across five weeks. And there was a comment um, that said, it'd be great if you could go over the bad uniques and offer solutions. Just a fun idea. Um, so I did that to all the ones. So every single unique that had less than 100 people using them in week five, I would categorize as definitely underused, whether it's because they're bad or just there are better things. It's hard to say. But there's a lot of, I think, really easy changes you could make to them that would make them definitely better. So I went through all of them and I made some amendments, as you can see down here. Um, there's some like really obvious ones, I think, that would, you know, not break the game. Uh, again, none of these changes would break the game or make any sort of offensive, you know, like there's already such insane builds, etc. Like if you had this glove and you made that attack speed instead of 60 to 10, 60 to 10, you made it 60 to 100. That would be a drastic, insane increase. 100% attack speed in a glove. Surely everyone would use it. No, they still wouldn't. That's the, It wouldn't do anything like to the game. So none of these changes are crazy, but they all do make these uniques better, even if marginally. And it's, it's just going to, yeah, this is what I would do. So for Offering of the Serpents, they're Already pretty good gloves. They offer some great things. They have one drawback being reduced maximum recovery rate, uh, recovery per leech for life leech. I would just remove it. I don't think it needs it. I think if you removed it, maybe three to four times the people would use them, right? So that rate would go from 45 people to, uh, even if it went to 450, that still pales in comparison to other uniques off of a base boss for usage and the glove slot's quite competitive. I think it'd be fine. Okay, um, going to Echo Forge, a basically unused item. I think the changes kind of have to be drastic. So for this, I would take the negative six. Like the negative values attacks and AOE scaling is so dumb. I would just make them positive at low ends. So instead of negative sixteen to sixteen, make it just ten to sixteen. Instead of negative forty to positive forty, just make it ten to forty. And just give it a roll range. That's fine. That still makes it basically unusable. So how do we crank it up a notch, right? Just give it lucky damage. <laughs> your chaos damage is lucky, and as a drawback, your crits do no additional damage. This doesn't mean you can't crit, right? Because this means so if you were to do a crit, and you could still apply a shock from chaos, etc. So it retains that functionality. But just give it lucky damage, because if you want to use it on Alberons or something like that, it's still way worse than using other rare stuff. But hey, at least it's going to be, you know, m definitely better than before. Um, and I would increase the drop rate to 0.5. I don't think there should be 0.5 drop rates, especially for goofy two-hand weapons. That seems like so ass backwards. So at least make it a 2% drop rate, but I think that change would make it usable, but not crazy. If you want to even tone it down, you can say your chaos damage with attacks, just so you know you don't have chaos casters using it. Not that you would, but sure. Uh, next, we have Grace of the Goddess. This is the new Uber Maven wand, basically unused at 40 people on the top end. I think one change that would make it so much better is I think the basis on is terrible. Why they keep adding prophecy wands for uh, a lot of situations, realistically attack wands, I think is kind of strange. Um, I would just make an imbued wand. Imbued wand is such a better base. I don't care how many imbued wands are versus prophecy wands. We know we have void bat, so it's like there's still an iconic prophecy wand. But imbued wand giving it the 1.5 attack speed means you can actually use it for an attack build, especially if you you know, give it some sort of scaling. It has a lot of fizz scaling. It would make it just viable. You know, we're just looking to make these things usable. It's an it's a 0.5 drop rate, which I would still put to a 2% drop rate off of an uber boss, uber pinnacle boss. It should be really good. It'll never be best in slot, but it should be very good. You know, that's the benchmark. Uh, Tempest Rising. These are the Goliath boots, the dot ones off of Cirrus. They're, they're okay. Some people are using them, but not really. Give them some damage. It, the whole boot's based off of dot damage and ailments. Give it an amount of dot multi-roll. 15 to 20 is what I put. So I think that's enough that it'll be at least used more. That uh, There's not a lot of dot damage on boots at all in the game. So this would be kind of cool to see that. Seems like a good change. Uh, Mark of the Elder is barely used. And I think this one change would make it at least more used. You could get more aggressive, but I think this is thematic because Mark of the Shaper is used more, but you could also do this in the opposite. So Mark of the Elder, give it like an amount of intimidate on hit for rare and unique enemies, or you could just say just 10% intimidate on hit, and then you can give Shaper 10% chance to unnerve on hit. That's the opposite. I think that's a thematic change that's pretty easy to do. Um, Void Fletcher is where it gets complicated, all right? So previously Void Fletcher scaled with Widow Hail. I, I want the change to make it scale again, and I don't think that would be too offensive if we made some minor concessions. So the part that the top end of Widow Hail is 250% effect of your quiver, 
from, you know, uh, so that would make the void charges go from 5 to 12.5, right? Which is insane, right? Because it deals damage for these charges, and then you could even have this void shot scale from, you know, 2 to 50, right? But if the charge regains also scales in the negative side, so you'd be getting a charge much slower than normal, and then you just make the ES and cold into negative. And you could obviously just make this a 30 or non-scalable, whatever, but I think that it honestly wouldn't be that offensive. It still is such a niche item for its use case. So yeah, it'd be great for like uh, shooting bosses with non-triggered things with a massive void shot. Or you could also change the void shot scaling so 50 isn't as crazy because, you know, scale, things, some things scale linearly and some things have diminishing returns for scaling, so it wouldn't be as insane. But uh, yeah, that, that, I think you should just make it scale Little Hill again. That'd be a fun change. Um, disintegrators, you know, again, a 1% a drop rate off of a boss that is basically farmed for watcher size. How do we give it its former glory back? I think one really fun change would do it. So currently it has, a, all it does is basically give you a bunch of flat fizz. That's a bunch of flat fizz and a bunch of non chaos is extra chaos. Okay. But it makes you take a ton of damage and it gives you some leech. That's the whole thing of the thing. And then it gives you battle mage, right? I think you could also just have it. So socketed gems are supported by Spellblade, and which is 130 mana multiplier, if you didn't know. So it does affect the mana cost, obviously, if your thing's using it. And it stacks with Battle Mage. However, you could make it so the roll is a 1 to 20, because I think that a lot of uniques that have high variable roll ranges is extremely healthy for the economy for two reasons. One, it means that you could sell the unidied port of it. Like if, you know, that's like selling an unidied Watcher's Eye for 8 div versus IDing it for the whatever. I think that's healthy in general for like the economy. And also to the fact that you have the divine sync of being hitting a 20 spell blade for the, just for reference, level one is 40% of the uh, flat is added and then 20 is 70%. So it's a pretty big difference in more damage. But uh, yeah, I think it would make it really cool. Again, most of these weapons that are two-handers, you're not going to use because two-handers kind of are shit because you can't use a shield and you're losing so much stats from that. So they got to be pretty overwhelmingly powerful to really merit using a two-hander, let alone a staff. So, you know, you're leap slamming around, I guess, or if you're not going to be some sort of flame surging. But yeah, it's like, it's it's got to be really good if it's going to be a two-hand staff because there's just not that many are represented. Um, Devour the Mines. I mentioned in the previous video, but I would just slap a one to three on it. It is a new it's a new drop off of a pinnacle uber boss okay it's got to be good it's if it's not going to be good it shouldn't be there currently it's not being used at all this would i think again it makes it usable and it makes it competitive but it doesn't make it better because it, the charges still aren't great for minions and you still have to give them charges off of yourself so i think ultimately i think it's a pretty fair change one to three if it was too strong make it one to two whatever but yeah i think one to three is healthy um attorney shroud it used to be so good. Now it's not so good. I think there's a couple of things you could do. So it has three to five elemental as chaos per shape or item. You can make it five to ten. You can just double it probably. And it, it would not be that busted. Currently, regular attorney shroud is like significantly worse than like incandescent heart, basically, and way less struggle. So it's gotta be better than a tier two base game drop by a, a margin. Um the drawback is I would probably make the life roll into a life ES or mana roll. So I have it drop in three different versions. Just make it a flat rate, so there's different variations of the Attorney Shroud. And then I'll just give it some attributes, because it's doing so much, and you're going to have to make so many concessions with your gear, making them all Shaper uh, items, that I think having the attributes would help alleviate some of the pain of using it. Uh, kind of like a Death Oath type vibe. So, yeah, that's what I would change. I think it would actually be like a usable chest then. Um, Void Walkers are already pretty okay, but not really used. I would give them a little bit of life, like a non-offensive amount. 30 to 50, short. And then they currently says that pierce five targets while you're phasing. You could just make it say you, your projectiles pierce while phasing. The odds of you hitting more than five targets in most scenarios is like probably not happening. So just give it the pierce. It's like the current, like, was it Lansing Steel? Trans Lansing Steel has just pierce. Just give it pierce while phasing. It, it, it's fine. Not a big deal. Um, Echoes of Creation is a 50% chance to drop off a Shaper and is basically an unused item currently. It is used for like super sweaty multi war cry manual exert builds where you're pianoing four to five war cries every couple seconds. Just make it better, give them more war cry usages, and make the damage you take less. Make it instead of 15 to 20% of life, make it five to 20. So you could have like a divine sink into it. You can make the cooldown even one to two if you want, just to give it a more variable role. But like if you're a player out there, any of the guys who are just like in trade, especially in soft core, who are playing slam builds, and choosing to play a melee slam life build and sweating through three to four Warcry rotations manually every pack. 
honestly, God bless. Enjoy. Enjoy your fucking helmet. Have fun. Uh, next is Starforge. What I would change to this is it's already, like, almost okay, but it's still, like, not good enough, really, to be used versus, like, a rare Arachiatas. Make the AO, double the AoE, so 40% AoE. Again, you can make it a range if you want, 20 to 40, but 40% AoE. Um, and then just give it, like, hits Overwhelm. Overwhelm is, like, the equivalent of pen for Fizz, except it's way worse because it can't go negative, right? If I have 100 Ellie pen and the enemy has 50 res, he's at negative 50 res. If I have 100 Overwhelm and, I, and the, the, the enemy's at 50% armor or whatever, I Overwhelm, they don't go to negative, they go to zero, so it's not as good. But that's why you can just give it 30% Overwhelm to, like, you know give it something that'll make it at least better and uh the last item is the the only item on this list that hit a zero for use case right gluttonous tide at zero percent I mean, it's basically not a not used item at all my change my proposed change for this is more drastic and it is this item i by these metrics basically you could say it is a complete failure of design i would replace it i would remove gluttonous tide from eater and i would replace it with voltaxagrift because voltaxagrift is a good item it is a desirable item it's a build enabling item, and I, I think we are okay with having another. There's like already two bows in the T zero table, like in Imperial, right? The Linus bow. Just put Voltaxic behind it. It makes sense on Eater. Eater does chaos and lightning damage. It's a chaos and lightning bow. I just think it makes more sense. Like so, that's I wouldn't even bought. I would remove this from the fucking game. Like it's so beyond good that and it's never used. I would just just put Voltaxic there. That's my change. That's my proposed change. You know, obviously you could just take those numbers and double all of the numbers. Sure, it might be used then, but why? Uh, just just give it Voltaxic. It makes more sense. Anyway, that's it. That's the entire, uh, what I would do to all these uniques. Um, I think none of those things, again, not a single one. If you'd made all these changes tomorrow, they would not break the game. They would not disrupt the economy. They would not cause any problems. It would just let more people use these uniques. That's all it would do. All it would do is make these uniques usable and potentially meta, but honestly, possibly still not good enough. Like if you made this change, it really it might not change many people using it, but it's just a little, a little nugget of joy that it might, might make it better for the people that are currently using it and might incentivize someone else using it. So that's it. That's the video. I hope you enjoyed your suggestions. Love to hear your suggestions in the comment below. And uh, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye.